All right. Can you check the stream for me? On YouTube. <clears throat> Sounds good, you could hear me? I just got it. Do you hear the music? No. You don't hear no music? No. Let me see. What about there? Can you hear the music there? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> No? A little bit? Is my voice louder than music or is the music loud at all? Can you hear it at all? Okay. What about... Let's see if you catch up to that and see how good that sounds. Because there's no way for me to tell without somebody listening to it and telling me. Is my voice too loud or not? Is it good? That's good. Yeah? That's all good right there? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So, <laughs> welcome everybody if you're watching. Bienvenidos todos si están viendo. Doing some live sound testing right there. Oops. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, here's what we're going to be working on today. We have an image of a shark. And today we're going to be working on canvas. So I have a big canvas set up over here that we're going to be doing on. But we have the, the picture up here that we're going to be trying to kind of work off of. I'm not going to really try to recreate it. But I'm, I like this picture. I like this shark. And we're going to use that shark to make another piece of art over here on the side. So here I have the stencil. And basically you could you could download these. There's a link to both of these down in the description. And you could go ahead and download those and use that to recreate this process and make your own shark at home. So, bienvenidos todos si están viendo. So, hoy tenemos un tiburón. Esta imagen de aquí de arriba es un tiburón. Y aquí tenemos el recorte para la plantilla. Estas dos imágenes están abajo en la descripción del video gratis. Los links los pueden usar para bajarlas. Y ustedes mismos pueden hacer su propio tiburón usando el proceso que voy a usar aquí para hacer su tiburón en su casa. So, voy a quitar estas imágenes. También en la descripción del video, del video va a haber... Um, Como se dice... So, también en la descripción del video va a haber links para el plástico que estoy usando para la plantilla y también para la pintura que estoy usando y para el aerógrafo que estoy usando también para una navaja que corta muy bien la pl el plástico um, Y sí, to, todos los materiales que estoy usando se pueden conseguir los links abajo en la descripción. So down in the description you also find links to the airbrush I'm using, which is the Badger Anthem 155. I'm using a few of them. And um, you also find links to the paint, Createx paint, the X-Acto knife I used to cut this out, this, the glue that I used to stick it on this, the canvas here and everything else you'll need as well as a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime if you need that to get the materials as quick as possible everything's down in the description so check the description down if you use any of those links it helps the channel out to bring you more videos like this in the future um, and as always thanks for watching and let's start so abajo en la descripción también hay links para Amazon Prime y para todo lo que necesitan para este proceso 
uh, usando esos links ayuda al canal traerles más videos como este so, cuando ordenan usando esos links nos ayuda a todos a aprender más y traerles más videos so, vamos a empezar so, voy a empezar con esta parte de, de afuera Right. So aquí este lienzo es muy grande y lo que he puesto es una cinta alrededor ¿verdad? y vamos a pintar lo que es el agua pues o la, el océano. So I've taken a canvas here, I've taped up a border that we're going to leave off white and then what we're going to work on is all the outside, right? I've saved my outside cut for this shark, you know, I have it set to the side over here and we're going to use that to make some of these uh, edges when we're when we get to that but for now we're going to focus on the outside area and i'm just going to start off with a little bit of maui blue so voy a empezar con el color que se llama maui blue y es un color azul cielo de createx <coughs> y um, si sí, voy a empezar por colorear la parte de afuera el océano de Loading up my Maui blue, and I'm just going to start in fading in off the top. I'm going to hold my stencil down. So now I'm going to be de arriba hacia abajo y trayendo la luz como se ve en la foto de esos rayos ¿verdad? que se ven así, trayendo esos rayos. So I'm making the rays, you know, that you see down on that reference picture, and I'm just bringing those rays in. Right? And the Maui blue is it's a kind of an interesting color because it's not really it's not really blue. It's more like a turquoisey kind of color, uh, but it's still a really nice color. It makes for good ocean scenes, and uh, it's a color I've been using for quite a long time in a lot of my designs. So, so este color que se llama Maui blue es un color muy interesante porque este color en verdad que no es azul es como un color. Uh, como de joyas a uh, turquoise que se dice turquoise cómo se dice turquoise en español no sé <risa> pero uh, es un color que yo he usado ya por, por varios años y lo he entregado a uh, he entrenado entre mis diseños porque es un color medio interesante y es muy pedido so, aquí me va siguiendo haciendo los rayos como pueden ver es un, un color azul cielo pero está como un poco verde no, no azul cielo alto 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 baby can I do that compressor this way I don't have enough slack on the line right, so I'm just coming in and chain it going down building up those rays I'm just building up a ton of color and I'm I'm working kind of fast because you know, this is we want it to be there but it's kind of going to be blurred out it's going to be in the background and we're just going to use it as a base as a foundation for our whole shark here that we're that we're making right but we do want it to get it kind of covered and then we're going to be kind of loose with it right so si queremos que cubra todo so hacia abajo no es bueno nomas un diablo porque vamos a subir con el azul y la vamos a combinar entre los dos colores y, y la verdad que queremos que esté relleno pero está muy bien si queda un poco borroso acá para atrás porque es la parte de atrás y no queremos que quede muy definida porque que, lo, lo que queremos es el, el tiburón verdad más que nada so. chao David David Servine chao cómo estás so, voy a regresar con el azul so I'm just loading up some bright blue now Switch over to bright blue. So estoy cambiando el azul, bright blue. The Createx igual. Y lo mismo, lo vamos a pasar pero de, de la parte de abajo hacia arriba. So now we're going to do the same process with the blue, but from the bottom going up, right? So going to accent that Maui blue. We're really going to make it look like, you know, the bottom is deep. So, la razón que le damos el oscuro hacia abajo es porque quiero que, que se mire profundo, ¿verdad? Quiero que, 
esta de parte de abajo que, que, que como que ya no hay nada para abajo, está profundo el mar, el océano aquí queda, queda muy lejos y no hay luz, ¿verdad? la luz acaba. And so I want to be dark, I want to be deep, I want it to feel like if you fell in there you'd never come back, right? The shark is your way out. Baby, uh, can you bring me one of those needles from over there? Hold on. Yeah. Where? Over there, uh, where the things, the stencil things are, whatever. <laughs> where the blue spray. Alright, so let me just unclog this blue bottle real quick. Tenemos algo aquí tapando la azul, no estoy destapando la botella. Gonna start building up those rays. As soon as this blue lets me. It really wants to work. Alright. Just build up all those lines going up. It's really going now. I have really blended in with Maui. So we want to combine it very well with the other blue sky. Now we are going to make sure you get the line. Rays going in there. Darken up the bottom pretty good. Get those nice deep areas in there.
right now what I want to do here at this point is let it dry real quick and I want to make some bubbles coming up so I'm going to take some white here and that same little V cutout that we've used for the stars in the previous ones right we're going to take that little V and we're going to take some white and we're just going to hit a little bit like maybe there's some bubbles coming there and we want to really let the paint build up so that it gives some nice bright white spots so lo que estoy aquí nomás es quiero darle un, unos pocos de de globos pues en la agua so nomás estoy usando la misma plantilla que hemos usado para la para las um, estrellas y nomás le estoy dando unas pocas Gotas de por aquí y por allá. Y alrededor de esas gotas voy a regresar. Y a lo mejor quiero que haya más, más salpicada aquí. So I'm just gonna come in here. Maybe I want some more. Kind of like a bubble effect coming, coming off, some air. And then we want some of those sun rays coming in. So ahora quiero uno de esos rayos ¿verdad? que entre. So no le voy a dar los rayos. Really, and I'm just being kind of quick about this. And what I'm making sure is that when I do these rays, I come all the way across the whole stencil, right? I'm not stopping at the top and trying to continue it. I'm just, might as well just go all the way through, right? Make those go all the way down. Like those sunshines are going deep into the darkness there. And that's where this shark hangs out. He likes to hang out deep in the dark. Yeah, add some more little bubbles there. Some bats. Maybe some more dots going across the top there. And I'm going to add a little bit of kind of like some wave action here. Alright, so. Le estoy dando acá arriba. Le estoy dando como. Como se dice wave. Como las olas, pues, del de, de, agua. Arriba de la superficie. Ya. Dando lado a lado, un poco de blanco para que se pique y luego le voy a dar saltas en los lados. I'm just going to simulate some waves here and I'm just going to give it some, some squigglies going side to side. Maybe I want to come in and make some sharp ones there too. There you go. Add a little bit of bubbles. And maybe you want some sharp lines coming in. Just to get some light. You know, yeah, unas, unas luces fuertes, ¿verdad? Donde está entrando la luz bien, bien, bien. Right, so this is where the light's really, really coming in. And maybe those spots are just... The water's clear, you know. So I'm going to take some black. And we're going to fill in... The eyes and the nose and this part of the teeth that's already kind of cut out. Right, we're gonna, Eyes, nose, and that mouthpiece right there, just like that. Okay, so then working towards the back, gonna lift this piece right here, and actually, it should be a way to lift it. So vamos a levantar este pedazo de aquí. We can just take that. And we can just fold it back a little bit. And get to hit that edge with some black. Make sure your stencil's in place. Y nomás le vamos a dar esa orilla. Vamos a levantar esto. 
y lo atravesaría con un poco de negro. Canvas, your stencil might want to move a little bit. Right, so make sure you have it all in place before you go spraying anything. That edge nice and soft with the black. Y más ligeramente con el negro la rosa de sabía. You don't have to hit it really hard. Just real easy with the black. Bam. Same thing down here. We're gonna lift our edge. Right, we can lift this whole thing here. Bend it over, right there. And then we're gonna hit this edge. And then just softly with the black. What's up, baby? You leaving? Okay. <coughs> Love you, babe. Have fun at work. And then we take this piece here. So, tomamos ese lado, lo doblamos aquí, tomamos todo esto aquí, y luego esta orilla le vamos a dar con gris. So, we're going to hit this edge with some gray. And just lightly hit the gray. And then we're going to come in close for black and just slight, just a slight little shadow right there. The black bam. Then we can lift um believe uh that would be this piece this top piece here we can go ahead and take this whole piece here <coughs> and we could actually just kind of flop it over here It's not cut all the way, so we just want to flop it over kind of like so. And we're going to hit that edge with the black. And again, we're just hitting it with a soft little shadow all the way going down. that put it back then we could take off this whole tail put our face back on the place take this tail here and we're just gonna hit that edge just softly with the black bam and last but not least we're gonna come in Keep all that separated and we're going to peel back the first layer of teeth. So this first layer here, you can pull it back all the way back there. And all these cuts, if you just follow the lines on the stencil that I put in the description, they're all there. And you just have to follow the lines. You don't have to guesswork or anything like that. I'd make sure to make this one as understandable as possible and we're just hitting that edge with the black uh, so todos estos recortes que ven y como lo estoy doblando todo está recortado y ya alineado en, en la en el dibujo que está en la descripción pues so, tomamos esa primera parte le damos con el negro la segunda parte también y nada más le estoy dando un sombreando muy ligero con el negro no le estoy dando el Oscuramente ni nada así. Right. And that's pretty much it for our stencil. Yeah, you go ahead and just set this aside. And this is all one piece right here. So todo esto es un pedazo. So es muy fácil para retener y para hacerlo otra vez si lo quieren recrear. So I, I like this stencil and I'll probably be using it again. So it's really nice to keep it and to have it. And uh, 
So the shark has more of this design like this going down the side of this. So I'm just going to take the same. See this? It goes over here. I'm going to just take it, flip it over right here. And maybe I want like starting right there. So aquí para darle el diseño al tiburón, ¿verdad? Voy a tener un recorte. I'm going to take my French curve here so that I don't go over my edge. Bueno, usando nuestra curva aquí para no, no pasarnos la orilla. Y nomás le voy a dar otro sombreado con el negro hacia, el, hacia la parte de atrás. Bam. And here's where the fun part starts. Right? We're going to start off with gray. So aquí ya empieza la parte uh, más suave, más mejor, pues. <laughs> la parte divertida. Uh, lo que toma más tiempo y, y un poco de, de paciencia es la parte de pintarlo, ¿verdad? So, aquí ya con el gris vamos a empezar y le vamos a empezar a dar detalles. So, we're going to come in with some gray and we're going to start shading it in and extending off that black. And don't worry about the, the white lines for right now. Um, we're going to come back and make those in with the French curve. I'll show you an easy way. Um, to do that but for now we just want to make sure we get that nice contour contour of the shark and give it all shape so I'm going to start with the dark areas here with the gray and we're just going to kind of give it all the shape it's supposed to have so uh, por ahorita no me, voy a, no me voy a enfocar sobre las líneas blancas ni nada de eso no me voy a preocupar lo que voy a estar haciendo es haciendo las líneas uh, o dándole el la forma pues al, al tiburón usando las, um, el gris para darle la forma a las partes oscuras primero, so, la parte de arriba del tiburón es mayormente gris y luego tiene esas líneas blancas ¿verdad? pero por ahorita nada más vamos a darle la figura del, del gris y luego le vamos a agregar las líneas blancas sobre el gris uh, y una, hay una manera muy fácil de hacer eso so, por ahorita nada más lo que vean, ¿eh? so just, what you see, is the, you know, the reference picture as best you can, and if you need to place your stencil down, you get some of these, so you don't get over spray over everywhere or something like that, that's fine. Right, but for the most part, I would just focus on giving it all shape and making sure that the color is correct. said those white highlights we're not going to worry about them too much but if you see an area that's obviously really white um, and you want to leave it that way that's totally fine and all I'm doing is using my reference picture and kind of adding the gray as I see this area is really dark I'm just coming in here there are some white highlights going in and we're also going to use our cutout So, vamos a tomar nuestro recorte aquí, ¿verdad? Y vamos a tapar el azul. Right, and we don't want to get overspray all over this nice, pretty Maui blue that we sprayed, right? So, we line up our stencil, and you can kind of hold it in place and just use that as, as you know, your shield for your tail here. Makes it really quick and fast. You don't have to guesswork or try to tape anything or anything like that. Just take your nice cut out that you've already made and put it in place and there you go you've got your uh most of your color in there for your shark and i'm just trying to find the proper one for the top because the shark's pretty big so it took up a whole sheet so once you have the top piece there Just work off of your reference as best you can. And I like drawing stuff out of my comfort zone. And that's why I'm doing a shark, because I like sharks. But I don't get a uh, chance to draw too many sharks around here. 
so. Just coming in and doing that. This vid is pretty dark, so I'm gonna make sure we hit that nice and dark. Let it dry a little bit. See that the shark's already starting to take shape, and we haven't even got that far into it yet. Using our French curve again, you, you see a hard edge? You take your French curve and you make that hard edge, right? Simple. It doesn't have to be too complicated, you know. So just go in there. And once you have that nice darkened area, you can really start coming in and uh, building it up and giving it all shape. I'm looking for this. And the medium gray is uh, pretty forgiving, so you don't have to worry about it uh, getting covered right away, right? So you can see it goes over the other one pretty good, and it blends. Uh, so it's pretty forgiving as a transparent color, so. Make sure you get that all kind of shaped in there. Maybe you want to do a little bit of on this not too much gray because a lot of it is that maui blue that we're going to be adding in but if you do see an area like maybe this this down here needs a little bit right. and like i said we're just building up the shape of it we don't really want to worry about too much about um those white lines, we're, we're really just trying to build that underlying tone of the skin of the shark. And we'll add the highlights when we get there. But for now, I'm just kind of trying to take what I see and work it in accordingly. And it took me a long time to find a good picture of a shark, so at least one that I liked. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, so todos lo que estoy haciendo es tomando y haciendo la textura del, de la piel del tiburón, ¿verdad? Um, pero como les dije, no me estoy preocupando mucho sobre sobre los tonos blancos. Sobre, ahorita so, no es más la piel, que es casi toda gris. Y usando lo que veo en la foto de la referencia, estoy haciendo esos tonos y, y la verdad que le estoy dando nomás la figura que veo en, en la referencia ¿verdad? si lo veo en la referencia es algo que le, le estoy agregando partes oscuras y a la misma vez que le estoy agregando esas partes oscuras las partes altas empiezan a resaltar y lo más que le voy dando lo más que va resaltando y, y si sí, sí, you start using your french curve here to really build up some of these highlights. That area is pretty lit. Cool. We're back here, so here, I'm gonna take this little thing here. It's kind of the edge of his mouth on the other side. So we're just going to take that and blend it down like so. And starting with his teeth here, we're going to start giving it some shape. Because his mouth is not completely just straight like that, right? And doing it nice and close. And he has kind of a shadow to his belly. Along with that, uh... Now we blue we're gonna be adding in, you know, to give it that color you see in the picture. He has a nice little shadow. And there's a lot of areas here where the little French curve will work in perfectly to give it some nice hard lines like this. Right, but don't be afraid to get in there and give it some freehand detail as well. Anywhere you see that. Maybe that's just too lit. 
just want it to be a little more detailed in there. So I'm just using the reference and kind of looking back and looking at, at my picture and just building it up as I go. Obviously these teeth are not exactly the same as the reference, right? Because I have to change it up in order to keep the reference as, I mean the stencil as one complete piece. And to make it easy and understandable for you guys that are new. You don't want to get a really complicated stencil because then you'll end up with a bunch of tiny little pieces and it's really hard to keep track of, right? And then just working off the reference, just going to add a little bit of shadows here. And this whole area kind of going down. The shadow, I'm working off the other edge there. Fill that in. Bam. And then we're going to take this edge here and we're going to bring that shadow up. And right over the eye here, it seems like he has a. Uh, like there's a shadow here. Kind of extends that way. And then towards the front of the nose. And it's okay to use a lot of these, right, combined to really find that shape that you're trying to make and uh, bring it out, right? So, como pueden ver, no estoy usando la curva para hacer esa sombra que se ve sobre la cara del tiburón y usando la curva y varias diferentes um, posiciones ya se puede hacer esa, esa curva diferente así. So, usen su imaginación y usen su curva. Y aquí ya no más empezamos a dar un play que se ve. Solo le damos diferencia. So, here we just start building the detail we see in the reference. And if you see, like I can see, there's a streak of dark tones here. That's cut up by white lines, right? But I'm just going to add in the streak. And bring it down. Same thing on this side, just kind of like a dark area so no estoy trabajando sobre las áreas que se ven en la foto ¿verdad? y en la foto se ven que bueno, hay unas áreas muy oscuras ahí lo voy a traer todo eso sobre arriba y aquí ya pueden uh, here. Right, we're going to hit that coming in. And hit this whole edge right here. So vamos a esa orilla. Usando nuestra plantilla que cortamos la. Lo mismo del otro lado. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. edge right there. And it's really dark up there. There you go. And you can see our shark starting to really take shape right there. All right, but we still haven't got to those white lines. Those white lines is what's really going to set it off. So, but it's going from here. We're just going to keep building up what we see. Finish up those tones up here. And it's really going to look really dark here for a sec, but once we come back in, it'll be all good. Cool. So again, I'm going to come back in, and I'm just going to use a little bit of the regular bright blue. I'm going to take my cutout here. I'm going to find the edge like this. So voy a tomar un poco de azul. Voy a poner mi orilla aquí. Y nomás le voy a dar un poco de azul a esta orilla. So I'm just going to hit this edge with just a little bit of blue. A little bit of dark blue. 
más el horno, nomás es el azul, azul normal, ¿verdad? Y sí, just there. I'm just, I'm just looking at the rest of it to make sure there's nothing else I need to hit with that, but I think it's pretty much just there. And then we can just switch to the Maui blue. So nomás a esa orilla de ahí le voy a dar con azul y lo voy a cambiar al azul Maui otra vez. Azul alto, ¿verdad? Right, and then come back in with the Maui blue. And uh, not everything is just color it in, right? Once you start coming back in with the Maui blue, I would recommend um, building up a little bit of that detail in those tones. Right, so don't just cover it with Maui blue, because it's not just covered Maui blue, right? Like kind of blend it in, make some dark areas. Coming off that belly, and then give it some texture. Right? And we really want to give ourselves a base in case we uh, want to give some white highlights and stuff like that. You really want to give yourself a base for that white to really stick out. And it's simply just not white in the picture, right? It's it's colored. Tomamos nuestro azul cielo aquí, le empezamos a dar detalles y textura a la piel. Ya, no nomás es cubrirlo con el azul, todo aquí tiene detalles. So aquí lo empezamos a cubrirlo hasta las áreas con gris. Right? So if you want to cover those areas that have gray, you can really start working in detail in those areas as well. So don't be afraid to really kind of get in there and start coloring it in, but also as well giving it details in those areas, including the gray areas. Um, because not everything is just gray, right? It's uh, it's underwater. It has a blue tone to it. And some of these undertones of skin here have blue. I'm just gonna kind of fill those in. So todas estas áreas aquí del gris tienen como azul mixteado o combinado con el gris. Pero la verdad que mucho de este color Ah, y también hay tres alitas aquí en el dibujo ah, Y esas las quité porque no son parte del tiburón Son parte de, que, de un pescado que se pega al tiburón So also in the, in the reference picture There's these three fins that are right here And I took those off because they're actually not part of the shark They're part of a fish that attaches itself to a shark and you know that's a whole different thing so i i took those off and i just left the actual shark um, but again we're just going to keep working in our color and our detail right here and like i said we just want to give ourselves a good base for where the white is going to stick out right but it's also a good way to give it shape right now using the Maui blue and the white that's already there. You can kind of give it contour and make it look round, right? And bring out some of those areas you really want it to shine. And just give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of little dots, and squiggle jiggle, you know? And bring some of that stuff out, make it look nice. Kinda, kinda satisfied. I think. Let me go around that a little bit more. Sweet. Now we start coming back in with the white. Y ahora sí, amigos, podemos regresar con el blanco y le vamos a empezar a dar detalle, verdad? So we're gonna start giving it all detail and shape, and we're gonna start off by putting this here. Right, and on this particular fin here, there isn't much um, of those squigglies, and what's there is actually kind of blurry. So we're just going to do those in freehand, right? So I'm just going to 
line this up as best as I can. I'm going to hit this edge really closely on the top with the white. Really close. And then I'm just going to bring in some of those lights I see. And there's like on there. On there. Right, and I'm using the edge of the stencil, right, edge of the cutout as a pretty good guide. And adding those white highlights just in freehand, getting some nice lines. So esta parte de aquí no tiene mucho detalle con el blanco, ¿verdad? So nomás estoy agregando esos detalles a mano libre. Nomás yo no les sabría muy muy bien con el blanco donde está resaltado usando nuestra plantilla como una forma de de donde van esas luces altas ¿verdad? Estos, ah, y luego ya lo podemos quitar ahí te va a dar esas luces altas and there you go, you have those nice highlights in there and you can see no highlights highlights ok so that's that one uh, let's see here, what do we need out of this? Uh, I think that's that's pretty much it for this whole side. Uh, what about this one? So this one here, this is the main, one of the main things. So I'm going to just go ahead and take this one and I'm going to tape it up there. So voy a tomar esta parte de arriba y la voy a... La voy a colocar aquí arriba con un poco de cinta porque aquí este es una de las partes mayores ¿verdad? que vamos a necesitar. So I'm just going to take that and tape it up there so we can kind of keep it in place. And from here, take my French curve and I'm going to accent that highlight right there first and foremost. Right, just like that. Then using our French curve again, the same, same, I'm going to put it kind of going this way. So, usando nuestra curva, aquí le voy a dar forma al timbrón primero. So, I'm just going to hit that corner first. So, nomás aquí la orilla primero. And then I'm going to add that highlight that's kind of going all the way across there. Right. And I'm just hitting it nice and softly so as to not cover all those lines completely, right? I'm going to leave that in there. And those uh, those white squigglies get kind of blurry as they go back here. So I'm just going to start off with some, some freehand ones, kind of going down over here. Right. So voy a empezar a una de esas luces altas, pero con mano libre aquí, porque se hacen medio borrosas. Hacia la parte de atrás de las líneas de, del sol. Con las manos libres que me les voy agregando. And I'm just kind of bring this in. Nice and fine. I'm working off my reference really. I'm going to add that sun that's shining through the waves, right? Just bring it in. French curve here. And you can really get some of those nice edges. Right? And the tail doesn't have really much going for it as far as highlights go. It's just a few of them here and there. pretty much it for the highlights on this anyway but here right once we start getting more this way these start getting kind of sharp so what we're gonna do is take our French curve and we're gonna add in some of these highlights but using our French curve to really bring in some of those lines and make it look sharp and we're just going to hit those edges really closely and kind of build in these little 
as many as I can see. As you can see, I'm just hitting one side, going back, hitting the other, and it starts building up that little webbing of shapes that you see. Now, if you really wanted to, you could, uh, you know, come in here and tape all these off. But I feel that this way is a little bit of a time-saving method, and it looks just as good, you know, when it's done. And uh, yeah, it gives pretty good results. So. The only thing I will tape is right here along the edge of the shark's head. I'm going to take a little bit of tape. So voy a tomar un poco de cinta aquí y nomás a la orilla de la cabeza del tiburón le voy a dar cinta. So I'm just going to tape up the edge of the head. And that's a terrible tape job. So, la orilla del tiburón y todo lo que estoy haciendo es usando las orillas de, de la plantilla de nuestra curva aquí y haciéndole a un lado y, y luego hacia el otro y empezando a hacer nuestros rayos de luz que están saliendo de las de las olas de edad que están pasando Y aquí podrían usar cinta y, y cintar todo esto, usar una plantilla si quieren, pero usando de esta manera sacan resultados muy muy buenos y um, es una manera de, de no gastar tanto tiempo, ¿verdad? de ser económicos con su tiempo. Y luego ya cuando tengan su forma, le, le regresan con un poco de mano libre. So once you got your, your shape in there, come back with a little bit of freehand around it. Right, and that's going to soften it just a little bit. Right, but once you take that off right there, the result's worth it. So we can take this guy off here. Right, and we just want that edge of the... <coughs> We want the edge to be separated, right, of the background and the head. It's pretty close, right, it's the same colors, but we do want them to be separated. So, you know, just accent those a little bit around that head so that when you do take it off, like so, you have it separated. It's not just all one thing. But again, continuing on, we're going to first build up the highlight. Right, because it's on the skin, it's not just part of the waves or whatever. Right, so all the first thing we're doing is just building up that the skin tone. So lo primero que estamos haciendo es haciendo la la textura de la piel, verdad? La, los altos y los bajos de la piel y dándole forma al tiburón. Right? And what happens, all these all these uh, lines here, they stop at this shadow here. So that's kind of why we're accenting that shadow for right now. And this is the part where we really start uh, using our French curve here to really build some of those sun rays. So aquí ya empezamos a hacer la textura de, de los rayos. Uh. And there's many ways of doing the sun rays. I've seen it done a lot of different ways. But as for me, this is just the way that I like doing it because it, it really just does save time. And using your number one, actually, that's what I should be using. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to get some nice little curves out of it and you know, build up some nice ways. Again, if you want to mask it out exactly like it is on the reference, that's on you, you know. I'm not going to stop you. But again, if you want to save time and you just want to make a cool picture and you want to get practice with your French curves, this is a good method to do so. Again, don't go past this, uh, this shadow point here. And just try to mix it up, you know. You 
you're not building a flame you're building kind of like a web with it and that's kind of what you want to remember right there's there's going to be holes and gaps and we're not talking about like one of those fantasy webs where it's all perfectly you know perfect i'm talking about a real web like when you look at a web from the spider and this it's, it's kind of all all over the place right do is using that edge and we're building up those as you can see there <clears throat> right and it still takes a little bit of time doing it this way but you have a little bit more control as well as uh, how you want to make it look if even if you wanted to maybe do little skulls all inside of here you could like there's nothing stopping you but I would always recommend to learn how to do these little sun rays first because they come in handy for a lot of stuff. Making it look like something's underwater or shining or you know, any of that stuff. It's also really good to get practice with your French curve set and get good with it. Right? Because you never know when, when you might need to use a French curve for a certain project. some long ah, so todo lo que estamos haciendo es haciendo esas luces altas que se ven y usando nuestra curva y la curva número uno la curva más chiquita es, uh, está muy bueno para estos tipos de cosas especialmente en esta parte donde está muy detallado porque esta curva tiene muchas curvas muy, muy chicas pues Right, no, that's all we're doing is just building it up little by little, piece by piece, little ray of sunshine at a time. And if you want to come back, maybe you see that you need to connect these, or you want to add some freehand around it, that's totally fine. And then don't be afraid to add some white hand around that area where the highlight ends, right? So blend those in. So sobre esta orilla aquí donde se acaba la luz, verdad, donde se hace oscuro hacia abajo, es muy bien usar un poco de mano libre sobre la orilla para que resalte un poco. Y todavía no le hemos dado con negro, so todo ha sido gris y el Maui blue y... y Blanco, uh, so we still haven't gone in with black yet, and black will be the last color that we touch and add in all those dark spots that you see. Um, but we really just want to keep it light and textured for now, so that's what we're working on. And continuing on, these seem to get a little bigger as we go out that way, as well as a little blurrier. So these in so aquí hasta esta parte de acá se hacen más grande y un poco más borrosas so no les voy a estar empezando a dar un poco más grande y en unas áreas un poco borrosas right? so I'm just gonna do some of those in nice and sharp and then I'm just going to come in and we're just going to freehand in some of these go right down the side and we blend them off right here we don't want them to go past that so I'm just kind of using my reference as a way of uh, figuring out how these go and just doing some nice lines going down Right. And 
same thing over here. If we want to use this guy, we need to keep that edge. getting close so here we're gonna switch to our black we're gonna bring back in our stencil here we're gonna start off with this eyes and the nose so aquí ya traemos nuestra plantilla para atrás y vamos a empezar con nuestros ojos aquí no voy a dar negro al ojo Negro de la nariz y al otro lado de la nariz. And just hit the other side of the nose here. Right. Then we're going to take the bottom piece, line that up. So, vamos a tomar esta parte de aquí. Vamos a alinear. So just gonna line this up. There you go. And we're just gonna hit it a little bit of black. I'm just gonna come up with it a little bit right there. Same thing going all the way down. Just gonna kind of re-outline it almost. But in some of these areas, we do want to add a little bit of that shape to it. So I'm going to take the negro and I'm going to take another form with the negro combining the gris and the blue and a little bit of the form and same thing here I'll put this down right and we're going to hit the edge and we're going to take it off and we're just going to hit right there on that corner. See that? It gives it that nice bendy look. You see how adding that black really brought out the white and brought out these teeth and that blue in there? Looks pretty good. So now we're going to come back in, bring this in over here. So let's try this lucky. Y le vamos a dar nuestras partes oscuras. Empezando con esta alita de aquí. Let's just get that tail. And then I'm going to line it up. And we have a little bit of a dark spot coming in. Right? And then a little bit of a dark spot right here. Let me take that off. And then our tail. And this is one of those designs where, you know, the outside actually comes in really handy. And I, if you want to tape it back on and leave it on there, that's totally fine, up to you. I kind of like being able to see my design most sometimes, you know. But there's nothing wrong with just leaving it up there. And we're just going to hit this whole edge here. Blend it in a little bit. Bring it all the way down. And it's starting to take shape. Bring in the last piece on the tail. So, aquí la parte final va a ser la parte de la colita and that's going to be this piece right here on the bottom este, este pedacito aquí 
right this little piece doesn't want to be left out it wants to be in there so we're just gonna hit that edge and we're gonna blend it up a little bit bam fast bring it coming down and there you go I'm gonna hit the bottom a little bit with a little bit of black coming up to make our uh, our ocean seem a little bit just a little bit deeper and then give it give it some nice depth to the ocean here it right there. Do you think I want to add some more nice bright spots? So no te agregando globos aquí ya globos muy muy altos. So these are ones I want to be super bright. And there's a little bit of those white dots in there right that are already in there but I just want it to be to be really bright so not to answer no global saltos altos uh puntos enfocados right and then I want to hit some of these waves again maybe just bring out some nice and bright spots so I'm just kind of being random with it, I'm not really being... You know, if you've ever seen the, the underneath the water, you kind of know what it looks like. And that's what I'm going for. Maybe there's some little bubbles coming off of this spin there because the spin is touching the surface. So aquí está lita que parezca como que está tocando la superficie de la ola. Está haciendo globitos aquí. There you go. I think that's that's a good stopping point for me. I like that. So ahí tienen amigos, nuestro tiburón feroz. Right, so there it is. There's our nice, fearful, sh fear, fearful, no. Nice, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Nice, angry shark. I don't know what you call it. There's our nice shark. Got the the splashes there. Got the deep bottom. We got our nice shark. And you follow the stencil and these steps. It's a quick and easy way of making your shark of your own. And it's not a cartoony shark. It's a nice kind of realistic looking shark. It's easy to make. And you can make it at home all by yourself or you could practice it and use it as a way of practicing so ahí está amigos nuestro tiburón y ustedes también se pueden hacer su propio tiburón usando la plantilla y estos pasos para hacer su dibujo y uso su pedazo de arte o si quieren usarlo para practicar muy bien también go and I like it I'll take it can I have two of them please <laughs> anyways as always make sure you hit the like button subscribe 
and we'll see you guys in the next video don't forget all the links are down in the description for everything you need to make this exercise except the canvas of course but you can get that just about anywhere including walmart and yeah we'll see you guys in the next video so ahí está amigos en el tiburón igual si quieren ver videos más como este no se olviden que los links están abajo en la descripción del video y todos esos links ayudan al canal, denle un me gusta, suscríbanse y compartanlos en sus grupos de Facebook, en Twitter, en Instagram, lo que sea, y si ayudan al canal, pues el canal les va a regresar con más videos, so if you help out the channel, the channel will help you back out with more videos like this, you know we already starting to build a collection on the back wall over there, so Anyway guys, we'll see you guys in the next video. So nos vemos al rato amigos. Bye bye.